Hello, brand new week. Hello, everybody. World news, let's go. America. But via the Financial Times at the end of last week, Stall Speed is the name of the article by Neil Hume. FT blogger Gavin Davis recently raised the question of whether the growth rate of the United States had dropped below stall speed and was heading back into recession. He concluded that it wasn't, but there wasn't much room for error. It seems clear that the United States economy has slowed down enough this year to be flirting with its stall speed, without actually breaching it so far, since the reasons for the slowdown include temporary factors like the Japanese earthquake and severe weather conditions, the most likely outturn is that the economic growth will remain above the stall speed in the remaining part of 2011, as expected by the Fed and forecasting consensus, but there is not much room for error. Now, this is, we're talking only about 2% uh, increase of GDP, and he says the forecasting consensus is for just greater than that, and it is in the big banking community, but in the blogosphere it is for um, just under 2%, I would say, from what I read, and that is under stall speed. If you fall under 2%, you're very likely to fall down lower. So that's the, the um, United States overall picture from the top. Right, let's have a look at some graphs to give us a, an idea what's going on from dailyjobsupdate.com who looks at um, withholding taxes as a gauge of things American. Uh, this chart goes back 10 years and you can see it was well high coming out of the dot-com, then crashed down for end of the dot-com and um, trade center naughtiness. Then it went up again for the housing boom, down obviously for the Great Recession, and a very good recovery. But uh, the point here again is besides that one finger sticking up in the middle, generally you can say call that a, an outlier and the, it has been stepping down since one would expect after such a deep recession recession like that that those would continue going upwards but they haven't they've turned and they're on their way down again doesn't mean they can't turn right round and go back up again but that is what everyone's worried about because when it comes to withholding taxes you can't fiddle that this is the main problem. Uh, this is a Ron Grease from the Charts Door chart, and it goes back all the way to 1952. Now, at the bottom here, where I've done my yellow daubing, is where I think the important part of everything is. It's owner's equity as a percentage of household real estate. Household real estate, owner's equity, the amount of money that you've paid off of your mortgage. That's about right. Or if you own it outright, then you're a hundred percenter and you'll be balancing out others that um, are just coming into the housing market with maybe 20 percent in etc anyway back in 1954 let's say i've started it was 80 percent 80 percent was paid up equity in the house in 1954 80 percent it was most all paid off i've done the 70 percent line badly I know but it takes us all the way to 1984 at 70% equity in the entire overall housing real estate market 60% line comes in um, well when, when should we say after 84 it drops down to there at 1994 and from 94 it runs along at about that rate of 60% which is quite a lot you know, but you've got to balance it off with a lot of people have paid their mortgages off completely years ago, generations ago, whatever it might be. And then that great drop down from uh, 2006 and where we are now down at 40%. There's only 40% in and that's obviously because the price of houses have gone down. But that's not right, is it? You work it out for me, just what's right and what's wrong there. But I think that's significant. 
yeah only 40 percent this is why people can walk away and f people feel jittery because there's only that's 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 the overall as well most people are either un un underwater or have very very little equity in their house and all they can see is a vast future of paying debts move on move on back to alphaville financial times speculators slapped the u.s doesn't like high oil prices neither does it like speculators it thinks exacerbates them yeah it thinks exacerbates the high oil prices the, the speculators yeah so we've got two things going here so why not take an aim at both on thursday the international energy agency announced it would release 60 million barrels of oil from the emergency stockpiles in response to the libyan crisis brackets which many have already noted has already been running for about three months but so far the decision has been mooted as a warning shot for opec to get its act together a form of qe easing but also as a secondary message of sorts to energy traders what the, to my mind we've got two uh, two things going here a warning shot for opec what what could that mean um the they'll try and bring the price down if opec doesn't but to me it says flag 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 whoa saudi arabia hello hello we're over here saudi arabia um you said more oil please you said you would uh, we'll do it ourselves then and having a go at speculators um, what they say are speculators now um, on this graph move on to 4b oil futures positioning the yellow line is the price of oil yeah US price of oil per gallon yeah so it's recently 2011 gone well over you know over through 110 and now it's back under 100 again so that's the yellow line the, the bluey gray behind mountain range is us crude net long positions of managed money um, what you could say are speculative bets on oil they're long they're betting that the price of oil will stay high this is the amount of long bets going in but you've got to balance it that if a long bet goes in um, somebody's on the other side of the trade buying you know taking up that thing but the, the, there's a balance and that is the 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 way of presenting it apparently but note back in 2008 when the yellow price was so high the net longs were not particularly spiking at all they were flat uh, through 2007 and into 2008 they were high but not particularly spiky but it's been the run since QE I suppose you could say it um, early 2010 which has taken the spike in longs up um, but you, you see the difference 2008 no particular long spike up but the spike the spike of oil price up and now we've got a spike a spike of longs betting that the price of oil is going to go up and the price of oil has gone up but not not madly yeah leave it with you to to make of it what you can that's the best I can make of it anyway so let's move on because what we've got here is obviously government manipulation of the markets and we can ask why I mean releasing oil they've done it for the Gulf oil uh, war they've done it for Katrina and R Rita you know the hurricanes and now there's no great huge panic on except I'll, I'll note that we're four years into this great recession thing it was summer 2007 that it kicked off that's to 2008 2009 2010 2011 we're four years in and we're still in the mire so there is a panic on but they can't kind of admit it but this was an interesting uh, take that I got from a different article in the Financial Times and it gives an idea when egg prices rose in the spring of 1996 <laughs> I'll start again when egg prices rose in the spring of 1966 an agriculture secretary Orville Freeman told him that not much could be done Johnson at President Lyndon Johnson presumably had the Surgeon General issue alerts 
to the hazards of cholesterol in eggs. If you get what I'm trying to get at here. Um, political ma manipulation can always be done, and it is very powerful. It can be very, very powerful indeed. Right, what do we got here? Oh, we're moving out of America into the world, and this is China. These are this is the China purchases, purchasing, purchasing managers index for um, well the PMI and for production, and they're both the, but they're both the same, so it doesn't really matter. And fifty is the line drawn in here on all these PMIs. Fifty is always the line between expansion up and contraction down, and you can see. Um, we haven't got dates here, but I think that the really big drop down was 2008, and it has dropped down again in 2000 and late 2009, early 2010, and it's dropping down again. It's that China is again a bit like the United States of America, um, could go either way, but at the moment is slowing down. That's the take from this. I'm a bit wordy today, aren't I? Coming over into Europe, and I found this one interesting. Um, that's why I've put it up. I hope you do, but it's more to me because I live in France. It's euro area export market share um, change in percentages. So the amount of export share of the eurozone each country in the eurozone has. And you can see Spain, Ireland, Germany and Italy basically have all wabbled along about the same. They haven't raise their share particularly or drop their share particularly but the red one in there is France that since you know over the last 10 years its share has dropped down markedly and um, other countries besides Spain, Ireland, Germany and Italy have presumably taken up that share um, and will have gone up where France has gone down because France obviously is penciled in besides Germany to be one of the big countries to pay for all this peripheral stuff but surely they're running out of money somewhere along the line. So just keep staying in Europe and uh, highlighting the problems that are still pertaining. This is the Irish two-year bond at 13% and the Portuguese at nearly 14%. Still obviously dreadfully wrong and there's no chance of these countries going to the markets for borrowing money anytime soon. Right, this is Albert Edwards' works for SOCGEN, a Societe Générale. Essentially, the Eurozone is a transfer union with a multitude of actors with veto power. If anyone decides that they don't want the money, in other words, you know, that's enough, don't keep piling any more money on us, or don't want to give it, as in Germany or Holland or something that says nine, that's enough, the whole thing could go up in flames, and of course it could. And Albert gives us, this I think is the key point that the markets are missing, kicking the can down the road in the Mr. Micawber, like hope that something will turn up, simply will not work. Time is a killer, not a healer. This is for obviously lending more money to Greece, uh, avoiding the haircuts this time. But as it's been said, um, they could have said, take haircuts now and they would have been bad about 50 percent it would have caused an awful lot of upset all over the place kick it down the road kick it down the road two years and the haircuts will be 80 percent and this last quote is from john malden i think in his last note talking about a conversation with um Charles um, Gav. Gav Cal is Charles Gav, his son Louis, and Anatole Kaletsky making Gav Cal. Really respected, powerful outfit that don't, you know, that really do some. It, it's well respected stuff anyway. So Malden's talking. Then someone asked Charles about the issue, which was the euro. Now, for those who have never had the extreme pleasure of time with Charles, he is a powerful, white-haired French patrician, and one of the better economists I know, quite a brilliant thinker and not afraid to express his mind forcefully, with a voice that sounds like God talking, without, with about the same assurance, 
Note to self, never again follow Charles on a speaking stage. So the question is entirely irrelevant, irrelevant, <laughs> punctuating the air for added emphasis. So this is Charles Gauve, so it's the question is entirely irrelevant. Uh, the euro will not exist in a year. Uh, the whole thing was dysfunctional in the beginning. I suggested that that was a tad bearish. No, not at all. Uh, I think it is extremely bullish. Um, the demise of the euro and the return of national currencies uh, will allow for proper allocation of investments and resources. Uh, it is the best thing that could happen for the markets. Uh, but not for the politicians. But not for the politicians at all. And they will do everything they can. The markets don't get their way. Or the economic reality doesn't get its way. The politicians will push and shove and fight and scream and stab. They'll do anything to keep it together. It ain't going to be pretty. Have a good week. Bye.